The topic of today is about encouraging investment into the African market. Um, I will be taking you through what are the current uh, offerings that General Electric Energy is offering in this market. Just the background of the company. General Electric was founded in 1878 by Thomas Edison. The company is well over 130 years old and is the first company to be on the Dow Jones Index since inception in 1896 till today. And uh, we've got over 100 years of global research and we have earned two Nobel Prizes and many more patents throughout the time. A bit of history of uh, GE in Africa. Interesting to know that GE opened its first office outside of the US here in South Africa in 1898. And in 1985, due to the uncertainties and the apartheid regime, the company closed offices in 1895, and uh, 10 years later, at the beginning of uh, the new democracy, the office in Midrand that you see there was uh, opened. There's a whole lot of history that you can see on the slides there, and uh, you can look at it at your leisure. This is an interesting slide on how the world is from an aerial view. Uh, you can see that it's uh, pretty dark in our continent compared to, to the rest of the world. This is uh, due to the cost of energy in the continent, lack of fuel supply and high demand of electricity, the increasing environmental requirements, and the escalating energy security concerns. So how do we get this picture to look like this. This is more of a better looking picture than the, than the last one. You can see sustained growth in global demand for electricity is inevitable. Demand is forecasted by 2030 to more than double. So this is, due, this is um, statistics that we get from the Energy Information Administration. The question is how do you move from here to here. Now, to meet these challenges that are outlined here, we have a number of broad set of technologies to come to combat that. We've got wind, we've got um, gas engines, nuclear, which is fairly new in Africa, and we've got an array of, of, of turbines that we can use and some water technologies. The, re the renewables evolution. There has been more wind installed in the US in the last three to five years than it has been in the past 30 years. The, gra sorry. the graph there shows you that of the installed capacity of wind and solar combination in 2004 to almost next year, the growth is almost seven folds and the industry is growing with well over $135 billion. So the world as of today is sitting at about 3,500 gigawatts. So what's important there is that a single one percentage shift to renewable will see around 40,000 wind turbines by just moving by 1%. And that amounts to a size of about $100 billion investment in the sector and well over half a billion solar panels to the tune of about um, $700 billion. So this is a pretty big uh, uh, revolution by just concentrating on uh, solar and, um, and wind. Why wind? Wind is a viable solution um, looking at the renewables portfolio, we see wind as the most um, commercially viable solution because of several reasons which are uh, attributed to technology, the turbine size and the project scale. So if you look at the cost of electricity over the years, 
so it has um, it has decreased by close to 80 percent and if you compare wind with other conventional forms of of fuels wind it's sitting at about seven and a half cents compared to coal which is the same and it's even cleaner so wind is a viable solution based on comparative studies that have been done there has been a lot of um, regulatory reforms in the in, in the in, in the in the in the wind in the renewable space you see north america has has been there before has been there europe latin america so you can see that without government intervention and regulation there's not much that you can do so we need our governments to support the policies to derive wind technology there's been some lessons learned out of this exercise and south africa has been a, a beneficiary of that what we have learned over the years based on what has happened in other parts of the world is that there's no one size fits all approach when it comes to when it comes to renewable there's feeding tariffs that have to be factored in and uh, countries that have uh, regimes that support feeding tariffs and there are those that uh, don't support it as yet what are the attributes to an effective policy are uh, stable long-term commitments from our governments there must be reward for performance the projects must be uh, viable and transmission links from the source of the energy to to the mainline grids so and climate change policy so there should there are a lot of uh, lessons that are learned out of that if you understand the customer value of of of, of renewable you'll see that there are literally uh, three key drivers to that you need wind of course to be in the wind space and you need technology which is very reliable so your reliability and the capacity factor of your turbine is key and the power price that um, that is available for for us so for product strategy you really have to make sure that you have the necessary wind regime you have the correct turbine and you've got an attractive price for ipps so just to tell you about one of the uh, turbines that we have, our 1.5 megawatt, which is the, the industry workhorse. This turbine has been improved drastically from uh, 2002 to at least 2010. The same turbine has increased its, 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 um, its, 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 its capacity from powering at least 420 households to powering 600 households. So this, there's been an increase of about 40% on the same technology over the last 10 years, between 2002 and almost today. So there's been 40% increase on that. And this is really because we are investing every day in making sure that we, we are the, the, the industry leaders. And for your information, this particular um, turbine is the world's largest um, sing, is the world's single largest fleet. In 2002, we had an installed capacity of a thousand of them, and by 2010, we had over 14,000. So you can look at it that it's a it's a really hot hot seller. Something else that is um, applicable to our region is gas engines. Gas engines provide a reliable on-site power with gas engines. We have installed quite a few of these gas engines in South Africa to extend that some of our major clients have moved away from depending entirely on the national grid and they have become self-sustainable. This uses a variety of fuels and uh, our technical team is available to look at the, to look at the source in fact, last year during the COP17 in Durban, we showcased some of these engines where in KwaZulu Natal in Durban, we had seven, seven, 
seven of these engines that are producing at least seven megawatts of power for the Etequini municipality. So really, we can use this as an alternative to, to supplementing the grid. How do we get that right? GE is, 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 is spending well over a billion rand on renewable energy technology investment and the number is growing rapidly. We use some of our in-house technologies from our gas turbines that we, we are well known for. We use um, technology from the, the drive trains from, the, from, the, from our transportation. And we have a global research center that looks into the technologies to make sure that our products are adaptable to, to the conditions of each country. And we've got a financing model through uh, energy financial services and GE Capital. And we have our GE Aviation where we, we, we source in some of the in-house. So we're really bringing GE scale and expertise to differentiate long term. So all of our products, they borrow from one, one of the other main things. So these are some of the projects that we are involved in. We've got three major, we've got three projects that we do in Nigeria to the output of about 191, the other one 138, and the one 135. All these top three are in, are in Nigeria. And for those that are from South Africa, you'll know that we supply the switch gears to Midwipi Power Station in Le Palale Limpopo. And uh, the first delivery of our orders kicked in last year. So we are really spread out through the, through the continent and we are developing this model every day. So when you look ahead, uh, global energy demand is expected to nearly double or triple in the next couple of years. There's increasing environmental requirements and this is a global challenge, not only South Africa, Southern Africa or Africa. So renewable is part of the solution. So you need a balanced portfolio to make sure that we meet these demands. Thank you. Thank you, Ram. <laughs> Any clarifications or questions? Any questions? I know we are sitting between lunchtime and the people here, so... No, no questions? Yeah. There's one oh, there. there's one coming. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Grand Malonga from Malawi. Uh, it is very, very interesting that uh, we are advocating for renewable energies. Uh, my challenge has been uh, availability of energy on the standalone uh, sort of uh, stations uh, in terms of wind and solar. Um, how much progress have we made to supply uh, energy? For example, you talked about the 1.5 megawatt uh, turbine providing for 600 houses. Uh, do we have the necessary storage facilities for standalone facilities uh, to provide the energy for 24 hours? Thank you. Another question? Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Richard Baja. I'm from Volta River Authority, Ghana. Uh, we use a lot of the GE Frame 9 use. Um, but my question is this. Uh, we know that there's a shortage of, of power in Africa. And um, I'm sure that GE is, is looking at, apart from the products or the technology that you want to sell to utilities or countries in Africa, um, I want to know whether GE is doing something and the front end part of it, which is looking at how they can assist countries or utilities do the development phase, uh, financing and all that. Is GE making efforts in those areas before they provide the technologies and the products to these utilities? Yeah, I'll start with, uh, with, with the latter question. 
GE has uh, energy financial services that I mentioned, and uh, you will acknowledge that in your country there's a Ghana 1000 project that uh, GE and uh, your government is involved in. So GE can bring together not only the, the technical equipment itself, but it will bring um, our global projects office to package an offering, not only giving you an engine, but it will give you the necessary uh, required aspects of making sure that you move from no, no energy to uh, whatever, 1,000 megawatts. So we have an example that we're working in in your country, the Ghana 1000 project where we are bringing all forms of finances, we are bringing finance, we are bringing the technical equipment itself and we are bringing all forms of aspects that will ensure that we, 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 we deliver the 1000. So we are not only selling equipment but we are, selling, we are, we are providing a solution to power the country. I hope I have answered your question. Okay, let me answer that one uh, while you have a follow-up. How do we move from 420 to 600 odd households and making sure that we have 24 hours? If you recall, and you probably know that wind requires a base load. So you cannot expect wind to be and wind is, 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 is very unreliable. So if you have the correct wind regime, you can be able to push enough megawatts for the day. However, we have a, another part of our offerings, battery storage facility where we can pump, we can generate electricity during the day and store it for use after hours. So during the day, you will still be using the normal flow through of energy direct from the wind turbine for own use and a portion of that will be stored for later use after hours when there's no when there's no enough wind to power that so yes we have a solution where we can complement our wind turbines to provide you with a 24 hour end to end security of energy yeah, so that's a follow-up question. The 1,000 megawatt project that you talked about, um, I mean, my information is that GE really is looking at the technology part, and uh, they do not want to take any risk in the, in the development side, and even including providing financing and all that. They're still waiting for the government to put in and take up all those risks and put in the various financing, and just looking at selling their equipment. Can I refer you to our West Africa office? They are here. I'm responsible for Southern Africa, but the, my counterpart for West Africa is here. He will give you the granular update on what is happening in West Africa, particularly on the Ghana 1000 project. So I can connect you with him just after this presentation.